Hey, Blake Rudis here with F64 Academy and F64 Elite. And as the title suggests, you're probably here because you wanna learn how to master Photoshop, right? Well, in today's video, I'm gonna show you how. Well, as you might guess, it's practically impossible for me to teach you how to master Photoshop in one video. That is to say, I can't teach you how to jump into Photoshop, know everything you need to know in one video, especially a YouTube video, okay? But what I can do today is I can equip you with the skills that you need in order to understand what it's going to take for you to get to the point of mastery in Photoshop. Here's the sad truth about YouTube videos, all right? I know because I've been creating them for 10 years. With a YouTube video, this is typically how things go. There's something that I wanna show you in Photoshop. So I find a perfect image that's going to show me how to do that because demonstration wise, I need something that's going to work. I then open that image in Photoshop. I show you how to do this trick. You say, wow, that was so cool. Now the problem is, is that you probably didn't need to know that exact thing at that given time. So what do you do? You put it in the back of your brain and then the next time you need it, you can't actually recall it. Then you have to find that video again and see how it was demonstrated so that you can do it yourself. I know because I've been there too. Now the problem with that is that that's not learning how to master Photoshop. That's just learning Photoshop. That mastery would be, you could recall exactly what you need to do when you jump into Photoshop. That's a lot harder to do than just learning Photoshop. So then how do you learn to master Photoshop? Well, I'm gonna equip you with some strategies first, then I'm gonna show you demonstration on how that works when you apply that strategy. So the key to mastering anything, and I'm a firm believer that us as human beings have this giant brain that lives inside of our head that is capable of doing anything, anything. All right, what separates one person from another person and why they're so good at something versus another person, there is a certain sense of natural talent sometimes, but even the person who doesn't have a natural talent can still learn to master something. How? Well, the brain likes this thing called deliberate practice, not just practice. Practice is like just coming in here and moving some sliders around. Deliberate practice is saying today, I'm gonna come into Photoshop, I'm gonna use the curves adjustment layer, and I'm not gonna leave until I've got a really good handling on the curves adjustment layer. That's deliberate practice. You're narrowing your focus and your attention on one very deliberate thing, and you're not gonna stop until you've got it down. The sports community does this really well. You're a basketball player. You might sit there and shoot free throws for four hours until your arm can't shoot free throws anymore. If you're a tennis player, you might work on your serve for four hours one day until you can't work on that serve anymore. What happens there is not only do you make a connection with the way certain things move, you also do this thing called muscle memory. Muscle memory kicks in, you start to realize exactly where that position needs to be when you shoot that ball, and guess what? You've made a free throw. What happens here in Photoshop is a little bit different. Yes, there's some muscle memory with the hand-eye coordination that happens on your keyboard, but the critical thing that happens when you deliberately practice and narrow your focus and your attention on one thing in Photoshop and work on it for hours at a time is you start to create these crevices in your brain. These little crevices in your brain, as they get deeper, you start to master the thing that's at hand. Okay, And then as those things get deeper and crawl around, you start making all these crazy connections, and before you know it, you've mastered Photoshop but you gotta start with the basics, okay? You have to start with very basic things. Just like the basketball player would practice the free throw, you gotta go in there and see what happens with blend modes. But you're not just moving a blend mode and saying, oh, that's cool. You're actually recording a pattern. Whether you record that pattern on a piece of paper or in your head, when you use a certain blend mode, it's gonna do this, and you record the pattern. I would say that a lot of what I do in Photoshop is just pattern recognition. I know because I've worked on things over and over and over again, exactly what's gonna happen when I do something in Photoshop. And it has nothing to do with the mathematics behind what it is that's happening. A lot of blend modes are based off of mathematics. I don't know the mathematics. I'm not a scientist. I'm not a pixel scientist. I know nothing about that stuff. But what I do know is that if I use one thing enough, I can recognize a pattern. And if I can recognize a pattern, I can predict what's gonna happen somewhere else. That comes with deliberate practice not just using one blend mode once on one adjustment layer, but using that one blend mode on every adjustment layer that's possible. Using that one blend mode with fill, with opacity, with fill, opacity, blend if, and masking. Okay, it digs deep, It's but it's really simple when you get down to the basics, okay? So I'm gonna tell you this, these panels that I've created in Photoshop, both the Zone System Express, Palette Effects, Dodge and Burn Pro Panel, these things that I developed from the ground up are built on extremely basic tasks things that could be done in Photoshop CS2 or even Photoshop 5.5, okay? Now, the thing is, is that very basic things 
create the foundation for everything else. That's true for not just Photoshop. It's also true for fo for basketball and other sports too. The foundational things that you learn set the foundation for everything else. And I can tell you that while there's many tools in Photoshop that are really cool, they're merely magic tricks. Content aware, Phil? Cool. But it's only a magic trick if you don't know how to use it appropriately. So let's put that into practice and I'll walk you through how that looks. So this photograph was taken in Badlands National Park recently, and I want to practice something on this. So let's say I go into my usual practice mode and I say, okay, I'm going to go into the adjustment layers and I'm going to click the gradient. Okay. So the gradient fill pops up and you're like, whoa, what is this? Why is it doing this? When you first click it, it could even be a really ugly gradient like this one. Okay. And you could say to yourself, why on earth would I ever use this thing in my photo and press okay. And then press delete. And you could walk away and be done now because I've deliberately practiced all of the things I'm going to teach you, I'm going to show you how I build up on basic foundational things. An adjustment layer is a basic foundational thing, but attaching something like a blend mode to it gets a little bit more advanced. What the blend mode does is it changes the math and the science behind this gradient, and it allows it to do something different on my photograph. So let's just say, for instance, I use the blend mode of soft light. Now, if you know what soft light does, it cuts out anything that's 50% gray. It makes dark things darker and light things lighter. But guess what it also does? If it's colors and there's colors that are attributed to those darker or lighter areas, it's going to make things darker or lighter with the given color that's there. So basically what's happening with this gradient, if we remember, it went from the top to the bottom, making it orange to red. So those light areas up there get lighter while adding the color orange to them. The bottom areas get deeper and darker while adding the brighter color of red to it. Now, if I click on this gradient, I can change the color of this gradient. So if I change the color of this gradient and I make this red area something like this, that bottom area is going to get brighter while also adding the color pink to it. Okay. Now I only know that because of deliberate practice, but what does deliberate practice allow me to do? It's allowed me to make things more predictable in my workflow. Okay. And I can actually probably make a pretty darn good gradient, even with what I've just done here. So I'll press okay. I'll press okay on this. Now, the other thing you need to know is that when you do deliberately practice, practice with everything. So with the gradient fill, for instance, you would practice with changing the gradient, changing the color of the gradient after you have the blend mode set up, changing the style of the gradient. Right now, this is a linear gradient, meaning it's going to set a linear parameter and have a gradation from one color to the next. If I set the radial parameter, it's now going to make a circle somewhere, which I can then move this around and click and move this around once I'm in the gradient fill and set this to this area right here. So what that's doing is it's allowing my gradient to be a circle that starts with pink and transitions into orange. I'll press okay on this. All right, now I've got this soft light gradient set up like this. I could then drop the opacity like this, so it's not so strong in certain areas, and it's starting to look better. It's actually giving my image different colors that I start to like. But here's the cool part. Once you've deliberately practiced with those gradients and you click over here and you have a gradient selected, like this gradient fill layer, I can then go into these gradients and start experimenting with all the other gradients I've ever created. And I might actually come up with a really cool concoction of color grading that's going to affect this image. Like, look at this one. This one starts really dark down here and then goes out and gets much brighter with the pinks on the outside. And that's great. That shows me that that pink area might be something I want to explore for this photo. So if I double click on this gradient to change the color, I might want to make this maybe just a lighter color of blue so that this draws some attention to this area. So now what I've done with one single gradient is I've drawn the eye towards this area by brightening that up with the color blue and making things pink in the area around it. Don't like what it does to this guy? Neither do I. I don't have to worry about that because I've practiced enough with masking to know that I can just brush back here on this guy and get that back. Okay. Starting to look better. Now, you might say to yourself too, well, I don't really like what it's doing to the darkest dark areas. I kind of want to preserve those. So do I. Well, guess what? That's where something like blend if comes in because I've deliberately practiced so much with blend if I'll just double click on this and within the blend if parameters, I move this over and that starts to protect my darkest dark areas from this gradient affecting the image alt or option click it splits and feathers over and look at that. We get a really nice transition there. So now what's happened with this gradient, this gradient that we initially clicked on and would have thrown away if we didn't deliberately practice with has done some wonderful things and has really made the Badlands shine like it does at that beautiful glowing hour of sunset. One gradient changed the whole look of this photograph. You don't like the color of that gradient? Try another one and deliberately practice and record 
whether in your mind or on a piece of paper, what happens when you change that gradient, what happens to those colors in your image as you change that gradient. Even this one's really nice. I tend to like that lighter color look here. So I'm gonna double click on this, click on this color, and then change this color to something a little bit lighter so it draws the attention there. And I like that, looks good. Now I know I was talking you through that really quickly, but if you break this down, what would you deliberately practice on after you watch this video? Number one, you deliberately practice on what the gradient is, what the gradient does, what's a radial gradient, what's a linear gradient, what's a reflected gradient. Just experiment with what those gradients are before going anywhere else. The second thing, what happens when we change the blend mode of that gradient? How does that blend mode affect the rest of the image? What happens if we use a soft light blend mode or the overlay blend mode? Or what happens if we do something crazy and use like something like the hard mix blend mode, but drop the fill instead of the opacity? These are all individual things that you could deliberately practice on. And what I mean deliberately practice on, I don't want you to jump in here and try to do all of that with just one gradient and bing, bang, boom, you're not gonna learn it. You have to deliberately practice with gradients, then deliberately practice with your blend modes, deliberately practice with opacity, deliberately practice with fill. And not just come here to YouTube to find some magic trick on how you're gonna replace a sky with blend if. You're barely ever gonna use it. As I mentioned, I've been in Photoshop for 22 years. I started using Photoshop in 1998, okay? Then in about 2010, I started my blog. So 12 years of using Photoshop. Was I a master yet? Not hardly. 2012, I really started to work on my Photoshop proficiency because I realized that the videos I created between 2010 and 2012 were not very good. And in order for me to get better at this, I was gonna to need to spend a lot more time practicing in Photoshop so that I could deliver the best YouTube videos I could possibly come up with. And that's my goal, that's my mission, it's always been. By 2020, I finally have the confidence that I've built, but I've done it through deliberate practice. But I realized that between 1998 and 2012, what was I doing? I was dabbling. I wasn't doing anything significant that was really helping me out. Sure, I was building a very small foundation of some of the elements that I would need to know for Photoshop, but I was not nearly to the point where I could open up an image and tell you what I would need to do with a gradient. Here, between 2012 and 2020, I did a lot of deliberate practicing a ton of deliberate practicing. I put in hours. I set aside time in my day to say, you know what? Have you been in Photoshop today, Blake? I used to have a post-it note that said, get into Photoshop and do something. Deliberately practice. At that time, did I know it was deliberate practice? No, I didn't realize that until now because now I'm studying that stuff. But between 2012 and 2020, I got really good at Photoshop. But am I where I need to be? Nope. There's the future. This is all the stuff that I have left to learn, and I know it's gonna be awesome and I can't wait. But here's what's exciting about this. This is not a linear thing. I'm showing you this on a linear timeline, but as time passes, my skills will increase. Right now, I'm probably at the bottom of my curve. That's awesome. What 2030 is gonna have in store for me with my Photoshop workflow and the things that I'm teaching, I cannot wait to see. I think it's awesome and I can't wait to share that with you. So I can't stress enough how important deliberate practice is. And you might want to learn more on this topic. And if you do, I've got just a thing for you. So over the last seven months, I've been producing this course called the 30 Days to Photoshop Mastery. It's actually 31 days, but it's the 30 Days to Photoshop Mastery. And I want to teach you how to master Photoshop. So what I've done with this course is I've broken down Photoshop into very small individual parts, individual pieces. Now, the way I've created the course, I not only tell you what I'm doing and how to do it, but then I tell you and I urge you that for the rest of that day to deliberately practice that one topic. Now, the crazy thing about this is I've got a little over 300 people that are going through this course right now on F64 Elite. And the response that I've been receiving, even from people who have been in Photoshop for 30 or more years is absolutely incredible. They're telling me things that I never thought this course would provide for them. And they're finding things out that they didn't know in 30 years. They're also refining their skills on those basic foundational concepts that I talked about in the beginning. Absolute beginners are going through this course and they're saying, holy cow, where has this been my whole life? I've got this resource here that I can go back to because of the way that you've laid it out and everything builds up on each other. Now I'm not delivering Photoshop magic tricks here. If you want Photoshop magic tricks, stay here on YouTube, okay? And start doing some searches on Photoshop. I hate to say it that way, but it's the truth, okay? If you really wanna master Photoshop, this is how you get there. So if you're interested in this 30 days to Photoshop mastery course, there is a link in the description below and also a link in the card above. I certainly hope to see you there because there's only so much I can teach here on YouTube, especially when 
most of those videos are focused on magic tricks. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch this. You have a great day.